This is Right From The Deep. I'm Karen Ball. And I'm Erin Taylor-Young. And this is the podcast from writers for writers, answering the question, why am I doing this? Right. As writers, editors, and a former literary agent, we're in the deep with you, encouraging you and equipping you to find your truest story in the deep places. Get our show notes and more, including a free audio download on how to safeguard your writer's heart at writefromthedeep.com. Hey guys, here's what's happening at Write From The Deep. Well, first, thank you to all our patrons on Patreon. Again, this year, we say thank you. You help make this podcast possible. And anybody out there who wants to add their support can visit patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash right from the deep. We would appreciate it. Special thanks to our January sponsor of the month, Kimberly Woodhouse. Yay! Kim's a new sponsor to our show, and we're delighted to tell you about her. She's an award-winning and best-selling author of more than 40 books. Count them, 40. (laughs) Her books have been awarded the Carol Award, the Holt Medallion, Reader's Choice Award, Sela Award, Spur Award, and on and on the awards go. She's a popular speaker and teacher. She's shared with over 1 million people at more than 2,500 venues across the country. Wow. That's impressive. Her latest book is The Secrets Beneath, a Christian historical romance published by Bethany House. And I'm here to tell you, it's wonderful. Cool. We'll have a link in the show notes so you can check it out. Or you can connect with Kim at www.kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-E-Y, Woodhouse, all one word, dot com. Thank you, Kimberly. And it is my turn to share a wonder. And I got to tell you guys, um, well, first of all, we're recording this and it's not too long past Christmas. And that's a wonder in itself, right? Um, I I never want us to stop being amazed that God came to earth like God with us. It's it's astounding. Amen. And yeah. And this year, um, the family gathering was at my house and people came from lots of far away to travel here. And the, the funnest thing, the beautiful thing was that this year it all worked out, everybody's timing, that we all got to go to church on Christmas Eve together. And like me and my sister and my parents and her, my sister's husband and even my son and my husband was there because he was playing. <laughs> And it was just a, such a blessing. I, I'm i not sure that's ever happened in, in my life, that we all got to go together to a Christmas Eve service. And for me, that was just a wonder in celebrating the wonder. Oh, that's great. And now, here's, here's the, the show. show. Welcome, listeners. Welcome, everybody, to The Deep. Now, the new year started a few weeks ago, and by now, we're probably deep into the commitments and resolutions and activities of life. And if you guys are like most people, all that has probably come with a sense of rushing about. Now, rushing isn't always bad. I mean, like, say your carbon monoxide alarm is going off. (laughs) Rushing out of the house is prudent. But... You know, if rushing becomes the normal course of your life, that leads to stress and anxiety and exhaustion. And that is not the way God designed us to live and function. So this year, we want to encourage you to slow down, to not live your life in a constant state of hurry. To help you do that in concrete ways, we've made a list of 10 things not to hurry. We'll start off with something writing related. Thing not to hurry, number one, don't hurry to publish your first book. Some of you may have started the year with a goal of finishing your book and publishing it this year. That's not necessarily wise, especially if it's your first book, most especially if it's the first draft. Trust me when I say that learning the craft takes time and you can't put a deadline on that. That is true. And most writers don't know what they don't know until after they write their first book and after they get some professional feedback. The last thing you want to do for your writing career is be in a hurry to publish something that isn't ready. And unless you've been studying craft for years, you know, and revised that first book, say, lots and lots of times, it's very likely not ready. Trust us on this. We have seen lots and lots of manuscripts over the years that were pitched to agents or publishers or that were self-published long before they were ready. So take your time. 
time. Don't hurry. Proverbs 19.2 says, enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. Number two, don't hurry the learning process. With so much information and advice available these days, it's easy to take in huge quantities of ideas, techniques, facts, and so on without ever stopping to truly absorb any of it. Instead of putting new ideas into practice, we just skip off to the next interesting idea. This year, we encourage you to slow down. Let a new idea or technique soak in. Reap the benefits before you move on. Right. Think about how many writing craft books are out there and blogs and articles and workshops and courses. You could spend a lifetime hurrying from thing to thing. Don't do that. Spend <laughs> some time applying what you've learned about, say, dialogue before you go off to read a book on, you know, subplots. We're not saying that you have to be an expert in one thing before you move on because, sure, moving like improving the craft, that kind of goes in waves. You know, we go around in that and get better over time. But what we are saying is we don't want you to let distraction pull you away from something before you've gained real and lasting benefit from what you're learning. The same principle applies to life lessons. Take time to reflect on new insights and experiences. Often your newfound knowledge will apply to other areas of your life. You just need to stop and connect them. This is a great practice, not only to gain wisdom, but to improve creativity, because creativity is about making connections. So number three, the next thing to not hurry is conversation. James 1.19 tells us, quote, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry, unquote. Think about the good old days, you know, when people sat on the front porch and chewed the fat. My dad is in his 80s now, okay? And when he was a kid, his family lived in a small town where nobody locked their doors when they left the house. Why? It was rude. It was rude because a neighbor might need to borrow something while you were gone. So since the doors weren't locked, it was not uncommon for my dad's family to come home from somewhere and find folks sitting in in their living room, just <laughs> hanging out, waiting for them to come home so they could visit, so they could just sit and talk in an unhurried fashion. You know, one of the ways we see hurried conversation these days is a like on Facebook or a thumbs up on a text or a quick direct message or email. This seems to be today's preferred method of communication. Or if there is an actual conversation, it seems that people just want to get their point across and move on. This year, please try to change that. Stop and have deliberate conversations, not quick information exchanges. Put your phone down, close your computer laptop, look someone in the eyes and listen. Yeah, and that doesn't necessarily mean you need to devote like hours and hours to every conversation. Five minutes that are relaxed, that have undivided attention, that is worth far more than an hour of your distracted, oh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so number four, going along with not hurrying conversation, the next thing to not hurry is relationships. The writing business and life is all about relationships and good relationships okay. take time. Get to know people through, yes, unhurried conversation. Spend time with them and get to know them over time. Like go to writing conferences not once, but year after year if you can so that you can meet these same industry professionals and other writers over and over so you can get to know them. Ask questions about what they do, who they are, what they like. You know, with an agent in particular, you don't want to end up with someone whose style is completely wrong for you or a publisher who likes to work with a type of author that you definitely are not. You right. don't want to end up with a critique partner who isn't as experienced as you need. You don't want to line up a newsletter swap with a writer who turns out to be unreliable or hire a PR person who doesn't understand your brand. Guys, your goal is to learn about other writers and industry professionals as human beings, not in instruments to help further your career. 
And don't forget about the non-writing relationships in your life. They need time, too. Life is busy, yes, and the dual careers that writers often have makes things even more challenging. That's true. But if we don't slow down for relationships, we are going to be missing out on the very thing God created us for. We have been made by a relational God for fellowship. This year, we encourage you to not hurry through the very thing you were made for. Number five is don't hurry through prayer time. In our hurry up life, we can sometimes fall into the trap of thinking we have no time for prayer. That is so dangerous. Or our prayer time becomes a quick recitation of our list of needs. This is not what God intended when he told us to pray. And we are instructed to pray in scripture. Prayer isn't just for the super spiritual or the super devoted. It's for everyone all the time. It's an ongoing conversation with the creator of the world. When we hurry through prayer time, we're hurrying our relationship and our conversation with God. Two things we already said we shouldn't do with people. Sure as heck, we shouldn't do it with God. Right. In our last episode on silence, we talked about how incorporating silence into our prayer times can help us focus on God and hear him better. So our prayers do become relationship building conversation. So this year, we're encouraging you to just pay special attention to your time with God. Make it unhurried. Make it deliberate. And we're not saying like you can't have short times with God or that like a short sentence of prayer before you head into an important meeting or phone call or whatever is inappropriate. It's it's fine, but we are encouraging you to stop, to focus, and be mindful of who it is you're speaking to. Number six is don't hurry through your accomplishments. Gosh, the writing journey is such a long-haul effort. It's built upon a series of failures and accomplishments. Everything from your first attempt at writing an article to your first draft of a novel or memoir to your first critique to your first published work, and on and on and on, so on to the next and the next and the next. Right, and too often our focus is on getting to, air quotes, somewhere down the road. And we forget that being right here, right now, is important. It's a place of learning and growing. And now everybody hear this. It's a place that is actually just fine. This year, wouldn't it be nice to simply be okay with where you are and not feel like you're always in a hurry to finish whatever you're working on so you could get to the next thing? Because there's always a next thing. Consequently, we're always trying to move on and never satisfied with where we are or what we've done. That is not a happy way to live. It's it's not like you shouldn't set deadlines and you shouldn't try to grow. Of course you should. We're simply saying that if, for example, you're at the freshman level of writing, enjoy your freshman year. That doesn't mean there's no movement forward, but move at a reasonable pace. Don't spend all your time rushing or wishing you were at the next grade. Take time to celebrate each milestone, small or big, and to acknowledge and enjoy the fruit of your efforts. The next thing to not hurry through is trials. Mm. Yes, we know this might sound dumb, but hear me out here. What we mean is that when you're going through trials and the writing life, even the Christian life can sometimes feel like one big trial. Don't put all your focus on trying to claw your way past the trial because there are things we can learn in trials and these are things we can't learn any other way. There are ways that we meet God in trials and these are ways to meet him that are not going to happen outside of trials. So if your sole focus is on escaping the trial, you are going to miss meeting God there. You need your energy and your focus on God, not on the emotional turmoil you feel as all your attempts to escape trials fail. There's a reason God left believers on this earth and didn't just whisk us all to heaven the moment we gave our lives to Christ. And part of that reason is for us to experience him and his grace in the here and now, in this futile, imperfect place. Don't miss out on the way God can reveal himself as a stronghold and a refuge. The next thing to not hurry is decisions. And what we're talking about here are big, life-changing kinds of decisions, not like decisions about whether you should have 
tuna salad or chicken salad for lunch, okay? Their writing life is filled with decisions. So here are a few do's and don'ts that we came up with to help you not hurry into your decisions. Don't hurry through the first open door. This might mean you don't take the first offer of agent representation or the first publication contract or the easiest method of self-publishing. Just because a door opens doesn't mean it's the only door or the right door. Don't hurry your decision because of someone else's timeline. For example, this might come in the form of a sale on something that's about to end and you're tempted to just hop on board so you don't miss out rather than because you feel confident it's the right thing to do. Or maybe someone gives you a deadline which forces you to say yes or no, even though you aren't sure. Don't hurry because of someone else's timeline. Don't hurry to get answers you don't need yet. This might mean, for example, that you stop asking God whether you should indie publish or whether you should look for a traditional publisher. Maybe right now God just wants you to focus on finishing the first draft so you can learn the craft and develop relationships in the industry. You may not need those answers yet. Right. So some do's. Do pray and wait on God. And remember that his timeline is almost never ever the same as ours. Do seek godly wisdom in scripture and through other trusted believers. Do seek professional counsel like industry experts or watchdog groups, that sort of thing. And do listen to your gut. Now, we're not saying that every decision needs to be a long, drawn-out affair. Sometimes you really do just know, and second-guessing can be paralyzing. When you're in tune with yourself and with God, it's not uncommon to sense His leading one way or another, or to sense a check in your spirit if God means for you to wait or even run away. There's a big difference between acting rashly and acting on good instincts. Mm -hmm. Now, number nine is don't hurry through your day. Make white space, slow down, breathe, reflect. Don't schedule every day just back-to-back stuff. Think about your daily choices and your activities so that you're not stuck in poor habits that you're doing without even thinking about them. Don't hurry through your day. Don't hurry through your life. Experience it. Number 10, our next thing to not hurry is personal. It's individual. And that's don't hurry whatever it is that God may be telling you you're hurrying this year. Take time to think and pray about it. Where are you dissatisfied? That might be a clue. Where are you in a hurry where you shouldn't be? Maybe it's something we already said. Maybe it's something we didn't say. Maybe there isn't anything and that's good for you. But do go to God and ask. It could be something that you're hurrying for yourself. It could be something you're hurrying someone else into. Um, For example, when our kids were little, our youngest son was a stutterer from just about the time he learned to talk. And when he went off to kindergarten, it seemed to get worse. And one day it just hit me. We were having to drive far to get this kid to school. And we were involved in activities at church and kids and their sports. And, you know, his whole life seemed to be one big hurry up affair. And goodness, if this boy was anything by nature, it was not a hurrier. (laughs) Hurry was chaotic and uncomfortable for him. So we needed to make changes because we were just by the choices we were making as the parents, as, as the activities, as lifestyle, we were hurrying him. So we made changes. And most notably, we started homeschooling. So we didn't have to hurry to go somewhere or talk, you know, hurry to complete an assignment. And Honestly, it was the best thing we ever did, not just for him, but for our whole family. So think about what you're hurrying yourself or think about what you might be subtly pushing someone else to hurry into. And that will help you personalize number 10. In conclusion, Ecclesiastes 3.1 tells us, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. You know, the chapter goes on to list all kinds of different activities and seasons, like a time to laugh and a time to cry, to build up and tear down, and so on. But you'll notice one thing it doesn't say is there's ever a time to hurry. God doesn't mean for us to live a hurried life. He means for us to live a purposeful life in relationship with him and others. And a part of why we hurry is 
is because we don't always trust God with where we are. We don't trust him with the times and seasons of our life. But that's the very thing you need to do because only God is sovereign and only he can see the whole picture. So this year, let's leave the times and seasons to him and rest in an unhurried life. Let's be confident that God has our best in mind in our lives, in our writing, in everything, and he will bring that about. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. You can find previous episodes and more resources at writefromthedeep.com. And I bet you know someone who needs this podcast, so please share it with them. So until next time, embrace the deep. Your writing and your life will never be the same. Mm-hmm.